Hi, in this video we're going to look at three of the hardest exam questions on finance from the VCE Firthematics uh, Mathematics Exam 2016. Uh, so exam one uh, and exam two. If we look at, we can see a bright red stripe there, so we'll definitely have a look at that question. We'll have a look at the last question from the multi-choice, which only 30% of students got correct. And we'll also have a look at the last question uh, from the extended response on finance, which ooh, only 10% of students got that one. So exam one, question 24. So this was the last question in the finance module of exam one. It's in about an annuity. We're given an interest rate, we're compounding monthly, and we're given the balance after five years, and we're given another balance after 10 years. Now from that, we need to find what is the monthly payment that she receives, or he or she receives. So the tricky thing I think about this question is that the fact that we're given this five year and 10 year amounts, but what we need for our finance solver is a principal value, a starting amount, and then a final value. So let's just let this five year amount be the starting value, the principal, and then the 10 year amount can be the final value after another five years. So we'll put those into the finance solver. Now that $130,000 as a principal value is, is entered at as, as a negative value. And that's important. Remember with finance solver, if we're putting money in, then we treat that as a negative. So we are imagining that we're putting $130,000 in and after five years, we're gonna get $66,000 out. So that's going to be a positive. Uh, it's five years but we're compounding monthly, so that's 60 months, five times 12. The interest rate is given as 5.2, we enter that as a percentage, and then uh, 12 payments per year, click solve, and that's pretty much it. A common key error with this question, you can probably imagine, was forgetting that negative, uh, which would actually give us a distractor. One of the distractors was option E. So if that would, if we forgot that negative there. So it's always good with the finance solver to be careful. If we're putting money in, then we enter that as a negative value. All right, so this was the last extended response question in exam two on finance, worth four marks. And it's all about Ken borrowing $70,000 to buy a caravan. So for part A1, which is worth one mark, um, we need to find the amount that he will owe after he's made 12 repayments. For part A2, we've asked about the total interest he would have paid in those 12 repayments. And then part B goes on and it's asking about him making a lump sum payment of some unknown amount L uh, and which we will need to find, but we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, for the first question, it's a reasonably straightforward finance solver question. Uh, he's borrowing $70,000, so that will be our principal value. Now he's borrowing that, so it's a positive value for him. He's getting that money. The interest rate is 6.9%. It's a monthly interest rate, so that's 12 times per year. He's making repayments of $800. That's going to be negative because he's paying that into the bank. Now we want to find out how much you would owe after 12 repayments. So we're looking for our final value, click solve, and there we are, it's coming out negative because he still owes that money. But when we answer the question, we would just say uh, he owes $65,076.22. So that was part one. For part two, we asked about the total interest he would have paid. So how much interest would he have paid? Well, we know um, we can find out how much he has paid overall and then subtract 
the amount that's been deducted from the balance. Remember, he started with $70,000, and now he only owes $65,000, roughly, so the balance that he's paid off is roughly $5,000, or so just under. But he's actually paid back a lot more than that, because he's paid back uh, 12 lots of $800. So if we subtract that total amount that he's paid uh, from the balance that actually been paid off his loan, would find the amount of interest that's been paid. Okay, so the total interest paid would be the total amount that he's paid off minus the amount that's actually been reduced from the loan amount. So this is part B, and this was the real, uh, the real killer question. Actually, this question only had a 10% success rate, so out of two marks on average, students were getting uh, 0 0.2 marks. So not many students got any marks at all on this question. But let's have a look. So after three years, he'll make a lump sum payment in order to reduce the balance of his loan. And that payment would ensure that after another three years, the loan is fully repaid. So I think a diagram is useful here. He's paying off his loan for three years. Then he makes some immediate payment so that after another three years, uh, so six years in total, that his loan is fully paid off. So what I would like to do is actually work backwards. We know he's got to have paid off his total loan here. If we work backwards three years, what is this amount that he needs to be owing here? So we can find that using the finance solver. Three years is 36 months because he's paying monthly and we noted that final value has to be zero. The interest is 6.9%, the payments are 800, which we are told. Again, that's a negative. And that will allow us to solve for this missing value that he needs to have three years out. So he needs to be owing 25,947 such that he will pay it off in another three years. Okay, so that's good. And then all we need to do then is find um, that initial amount that he is actually owing after three years. And then we can find the difference, which will be our value L. So that one, again, it's a finance solver, uh, it's still 36 months, still 6.9%. Now the principal value is $70,000. That's how much he borrowed to buy the caravan and the payments are still $800. So solving that, we find that after three years, he owes $54,000. So he needs to make a lump sum payment to bring that down to $25,900. And so that would be the difference, would be our value L. So we can see there's quite a lot of steps in that question, which is obviously why it was the last question in the finance section of exam two and uh, the most challenging question. But if you think through it, and I think drawing a diagram helps, then we just need to know what to put in our solver to actually solve the problem. All right, so a quick review of the concepts we looked at. Uh, the first one that's important to remember is if we're doing a finance solver question, we need to be careful about which values are negative. So the money we're putting in, we put in as a negative value, and the money that we're getting out is a positive value. The next one was, how do we find the total interest paid? So for example, when we're repaying a loan, we find the total interest paid by working out the total repayments that we've made and then actually subtracting off the amount that the loan has deducted by. And the last one was one of those multi-step finance solver questions. So these can be all different, but the important thing is to write out clearly what we're trying to find or draw a little diagram and then step by step, usually two steps um, with the finance solver in order to find what we're trying to find in that question. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it.